Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have recently been doing re-entry testing with the Scram Spike, the Scramjet Aero Spike that I have been developing. And I have gotten promising results. It turns out that the problem with the previous video really was just KOS. It is properly balanced for re-entry. I didn't have to fix anything. Uh, so yeah, with Mechjeb Smart ASS controlling it, it seems to be able to get through re-entry. And now the issue is just getting back to Cape Canaveral and also optimizing it a little bit more. Uh, so I've reduced the oxygen load. So we've kicked out about 16,000 liters of oxygen and we are now down to a vessel mass of 300 tons which will get us off of the runway a little bit better. But I'm concerned about our in-orbit capabilities, in particular being able to dock with a space station for instance. And we need fuel for that and I'm not too sure we're carrying quite enough right now, especially with residuals uh, being that we can't actually use all of the propellant in the the tanks and that's a little bit rough I might want to reduce the mass of the dry mass of the vehicle to compensate for that and just uh, increase the amount of propellant uh, right now we're just barely able to get to orbit and it's once more a case much like uh, my Shinkansen spacecraft with the dual body design uh, that one had been designed so close to the margins that it barely got to orbit and uh, we're sort of here again so I might want to cut down on things uh, one option is still to uh, reduce the aerospike mass and reduce the thrust of them since we seem to have a lot of extra thrust I don't want to reduce the look of them because uh, they're looking exactly like I wanted them to look right there uh, but yeah anyway so with that let's test it again we're lighter now so we can go faster in the scramjet mode and that is important and we can get off the runway a little bit faster, but not as fast as I would like. But it's basically the same as Skylon in here. So if, you know, I mean, and as, as I've mentioned before, the takeoff speeds in KSP with FAR tend to be higher than real life. And so if we accept that Skylon could actually get off the runway, uh, then this should be able to get off the runway too, more or less. Or I could knock off the... Well, I mean, we're off the runway, but I knocked off one of the body flaps. Let me try that again. Okay, well, we should be able to take off now. Earlier, at least. If not substantially slower for the sake of the body flaps. Now, you would think with the jets and all, we could you know, make sure to hit Cape Canaveral very easily, we could just use the jets once we are at the appropriate altitude, but they guzzle fuel so quickly and we don't really have that much time with them after we get back into the atmosphere. So, yeah, uh, that's not much of a help, really. Okay, pitching down to go past the speed of sound. I've decided 12 kilometers is good, and generally pitching down to about 20 degrees means that we're not going to actually start going down in altitude. So you'll see here, it just, it'll just barely avoid going below zero on vertical speed. I mean, it's at 9 meters per second, but we keep going up is the point. Partly that's because we've lightened up. We don't carry as much of the liquid oxygen, so it's easier. These are still operating. Uh, they're 1,000 kilonewtons right now in jet mode. We are not in ramjet mode. Maximum uh, Mach number for them is about 2.5. Okay, we are past 20 kilometers in altitude, and we are past Mach 2.28 in climbing. Gonna switch modes here. And at about 700 meters per second, I'll switch to ramjet mode. We're obviously getting diminishing returns here. I'll say Mach 2.4. Okay, and ramjet mode. 
fuel consumption ramjet mode is like four times that of regular mode. 26 kilometers seems good for ramjet. Mach 4, 1400 meters per second. I'll highlight the scramjet right now. Let's see if we can get to 1500, I don't know. It'll be worth it. And the scramjet guzzles even worse than the ramjet. Okay, getting close to Mach 5 with the reduced load. Okay, Mach 5, 1500 meters per second, but we are at high dynamic pressure because we actually went down a bit. And as we go up, we lose speed, so... We're going to go up a bit. And we're going to open the air intake. Big air intake. <clears throat> and activate the scramjet. And we're going to have to watch the heat. Okay, we want to level out here. That's already too high. I think 36k is best. Okay, closing the air intakes and shutting off the jets. Or ram jets. And with the lighter load, I'm expecting more than Mach 9 with the scramjet. There is a untouched scramjet mode that exists that could get us faster I have not used that yet Mach 7 uh, we went lower than I wanted Mach 8 And remember, please leave operations of the scramjet in the hands of professionals. Do not let Tom Cruise anywhere near it. Mach 9. Mach 9.2. Nine Mach 9.25, and we're not getting too much more out of this, I don't think. I'll try and get to 3,000 meters per second and Mach 9.3. Got 9.3. Yeah, we're going down now. Alright, igniting the rocket engines. trying to get out of the atmosphere as quickly as possible now. Okay. Waiting for all the thrust to die off on the scramjet. Well, oh, I'm just gonna shut the sc oh, okay, there we go. Closing the air intake and leveling off a bit. And throttling down. Hopefully this way we get some aerodynamic benefit, you know. We do have to like throttle all the way down and still we'll probably get an apoapsis and then coast to apoapsis to circularize. Okay, well that's the apoapsis I want. Yeah, shut off the outer two engines so that we only use the center one in order to circularize. And we're just going one orbit around. Okay, 279 by 276. Nearly a one and a half hour orbit, which is sort of standard. It says we have 226 meters per second remaining. I don't know if it's counting the residuals or not. Uh, anyway, that'll be enough to deorbit.
And I'm not going to use... I mean, we could use the center engine to deal with it, but I'll use RCS. That was an extra sound I didn't need. Um, okay, so I'm going to begin the RCS retro burn at 115 degrees east. Okay, let's see how it goes. We have six backward facing RCS ports in order to make sure that this can happen without having an OMS engine. They're each two kilonewtons. About the same as the Space Shuttle's RCS ports. It carries enough battery for an orbit that should be obvious, just in case there's a fuel cell failure, they need to be able to return. So we are just remaining on the battery power and not activating the fuel cells. Okay, 35 is good for me. 35 kilometer periapsis we'll try it with. But it's highly sensitive to its mass. Uh, I should have turned a little bit earlier. Yeah, so the higher the mass, the lower the periapsis needs to be in order to hit the target. Or you could move the retroburn location, but assuming the same retroburn location, then we need to lower the periapsis. Okay, a little bit late on orienting here, but we are orienting. Okay, we are approaching 100 kilometers, and the pitch usage is, as you see it, very mild. And not unlike the KOS script was using earlier, and then it got a little bit wacky and wobbly, so. But that's what I get for trying to use the shuttle script with this. I guess they're different. So, yep. Not entirely sure why, but <laughs> they are apparently not controllable in the same way. The vicissitudes of using KOS to control space planes. Okay, 80 kilometers and we're approaching Baja, California. Pitch usage is still very mild. And we'll be picking up some lift here soon. Okay, we are back below 80 kilometers, now going slower of course. And we are past 100 degrees west. Cape Canaveral's at 8.6 degrees west, or 80 degrees 36 minutes. Okay, less than 10 degrees away from Cape Canaveral. We are at 70 kilometers in altitude, 5,250 meters per second. Still very well balanced. And, uh, well, using a little bit of yaw for some reason, though. But uh, we are balanced in pitch. Of course, this is not a cargo vessel, it is a crew vessel only, and so we're not expecting the center of mass location to be highly variable. The heavy oxygen tanks are center mounted, so we should be all right. When I say heavy, I mean uh, heavy in that when they have fuel. Of course, the dry mass of the hydrogen tanks is heavier. Potentially just one sort of rectangular hydrogen tank, really. I modeled it as two uh, hydrogen tanks side by side. Uh, that was to give margin. We can see Florida up ahead and Tampa Bay. Hopefully we can slow down in time. I've got a pitch up to try and see if we can increase that, and also see if the pitch can handle that. Oh, it's using a little bit of up pitch for 45. So probably the optimal pitch for this is about 42. I think we're going to overshoot at this speed. There's always the Bahama location. There's that. Let's see, we are slowing down rapidly. We can see Cape Canaveral over there, but we're still pretty high up. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go for the Bahamas. <laughs> um, 
We're a little bit off this time. Clearly should have started a retro burn earlier or uh, gone with a lower periapsis. We're not too far off, but the nice thing about doing it on one orbit is that we end up right in between Cape Canaveral and the Bahamas, so we have this choice. Okay, well, I'm going to start pitching down. I don't know if we can get to the Bahamas, but we're going to try. I'm going to try taking it on atmospheric autopilot. But we're going to have to be careful. Oh, yaw control is not great right now either. Yeah, we're not exactly turning. We're trying to turn, but we're not exactly turning. Here we go again. This happens. Okay, we don't want to stall it. That large angle attack slash side slip is not lying now. Up, 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 up. Uh, I almost lost it there. Again, the liquid hydrogen we have, even on jet mode, would only allow for maybe a hundred seconds tops. And we can no longer see the island that we're trying to go for. Let me just check. No intakes are open, right? No. This is just how drag's gonna be. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna try to ignite the jets while we're high up and more efficient. Now well, we're directly west of the Bahamas runway. I don't think we can glide all that way. Oh, they're still on the wrong mode. Okay, well that's not helpful either. <laughs> they were on ramjet mode. That's not good. They were probably guzzling way too much. I'm just gonna leave the RCS on to dump the fuel. Okay, we are subsonic. This isn't super gonna help us get anywhere. I mean, this island below us is looking pretty nice, considering I don't see a island in front of us too easily. Maybe we can go for that one over there. Uh, that's a long shot. Okay, we're aimed at that one. Okay, approaching this island. I can't see it on the map. It's probably some splotch. But we obviously can't get all the way to the Bahamas runway, and we're quite a bit off from Cape Canaveral too. But we took this path here, and we came around. But yeah, I've had other attempts, and I overshot less even though I started the retro burn later and went to a higher periapsis. It beats the heck out of me. And our mass wasn't too different. But at least I can say that we managed a controlled re-entry this time as opposed to last time. Okay, heading further down here. And I'm gonna open the big intake for drag. <laughs> well, it works. Okay, slowing down with intake open. Mm, gear down. Okay. Intake braking. Okay, we are down.
landing tick is currently closed, we're just using the brakes. It can land at decent speeds because it's empty, but it just can't take off at decent speeds apparently. But again, if you think Skylon can, then this can. Whoa! Oh, I forgot the, to move the landing gear back. <laughs> I mean, we could force it down. It's uh, or no, maybe not. Anyway, so yeah, controlled reentry possible. Location uh, needs some work. And so we're at 76 degrees west. If we started four degrees earlier, maybe it'd work out. But it's been somewhat inconsistent. Oh, I have the RCS on still. Uh, it's been somewhat inconsistent about the whole thing. And like the previous time, I actually was closer to Cape Canaveral, but I had a higher periapsis and also started the retro burn later. So it. It's complicated. I don't know why. But anyway, and we still held the 40 degree pitch and everything. So anyway, I am continuing to work on it. Uh, other things I need to do with it is to actually make a proper cockpit right now if we look inside. Uh, it, the inside doesn't look like it's the actual thing uh, because it doesn't match the windows. And you can sort of see those are the RCS ports in front. You're not supposed to see those and stuff like that. So. Uh, cockpit also I want an internal hatch and uh, docking port arrangement something that can open up uh, so an animation for that so things still need to be done but it makes me feel better that we could get it through re-entry at least but I need still need to optimize it a little bit better so that we can get to orbit with enough Delta V to dock with something and right now we're only going into the standard inclination of Cape Canaveral, 28.6 degrees. There's also getting to the ISS inclination, 51.6 degrees, which it will be harder. So, yeah, uh, some optimization needs to be done. But for now, uh, the space plane at least does a full mission properly, except for maybe we need to move the landing gear back. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.